All right, guys. Hey, thanks for joining me. Welcome back to the Regenerative Ag Network. So, <clears throat> we had a video, a couple videos ago, uh, talking about how to set up the test plot on your farm. Then we had the video of the dollars and cents of the different tillage practices, conventional strip and no-till, and how, how money can move around on fertility savings and stuff there. So we're going to kind of mash them two together. We're going to kind of recap how to set up that program, how to set it up on your farm, and then run through a two-year or three-year program on that and, and how easy it really is to, to implement. It is... It, to, for people to say this is too difficult, you know, for I get a lot of row croppers that are just like, hey, I'd like to really try this, but it's just too difficult. No, no, it's not. That is that is a an argument that is now mute. That that, that makes zero sense in 2020 to say something rather difficult. Get over it, uh, especially with this program because it is so easy. It works. It works. And so we'll go rather quickly, and then I got a board we'll bring up for bringing in diversity, kind of expanding on some of these other options for the next soil health principle of diversity, and some of the cash flows on that. So year one, here's how we set up our field. Here's our little field. Here's our strip that we're just not going to do tillage anymore. Even if this spring coming in, we're starting with bean stubble. Even if you chiseled the whole field last fall, that's all right. That is all right. Gives you a nice clean slate this spring to start with. So come this spring, you do all your normal fertility, uh, your your finish to, to get ready for seedbed, plant, pre-emerge, all that stuff. Because uh, you're going in with corn into bean stubble, so you plant your corn. Then at V3, for us, V3, I, <clears throat> uh, depending on where you're at around the country, around the world, uh, what your goals with the cover crop, maybe you go a little bit later, maybe you're kind of nervous, like, gosh, I really can't see putting competition into my corn, you know, in a little corn, it might hurt that corn. Well, then put it in a little bit late. The, if you put it in late, the worst thing that happens is it doesn't do a whole lot. That's that's the worst thing that can happen. If, if you put it in way too early for your region and something bad happens, well, then you can damage that few acres your couple acres of cash crop, you can damage it. But as of yet, there's people that are spreading cover crops behind the planter and they are not damaging their cash crop. But it takes time to get there. So err on the side of safety. Next time you're in the corn, push it up a little bit. Um, and so I personally think rye is a fantastic tool. Rye and oats should be in every cover crop mix. <laughs> That's just me. Um, you do what you want to do. But the, the kickoff right here already is we had several options at this point going for us. Is if we're going into a cornfield, if it's for silage grazing, there is a lot of guys out there that are adding cover crops very early, quick growing, tonnage high value cover crops. So by the time they come to cut silage, They've got a lot of green in there, a lot of added protein, some extra tonnage per acre. The ton of feed coming off the field is higher value, making them more money or saving money on uh, purchased inputs. <clears throat> you can also, there's guys that are seeding in clovers and alfalfas and other perennials into the cornfield. So then the next spring, they've got an established hay field. So you get your three or four cuttings. You don't have to wait till midsummer, late summer for first cutting. That's a lot of that's a lot of dollars on an acre. If you're a cattle guy, you understand how much money you're sacrificing on a spring seed versus rolling in and having a field established. Um, otherwise, if you're a normal corn and bean guy, you're just going to do harvest. If there are cattle people in your area, you could still rent the acres out for grazing, and the price is dependent upon you guys, what you and the other guy determine. Um, don't you don't have to worry about setting up fence people that are renting land for grazing have that already figured out all you got to do is just work with them and and come up with whatever rules you want that like well no grazing until after frost and they have to be off the field by this date um before frost comes out of the field that way your field don't get compacted by the the animals but they ate all winter on your ground and they pooped and peed all winter on your ground adding a lot of life to your farm <clears throat> I always say have the winter rye, so then the next spring, you're starting out with corn stubble. Again, you're doing, if you have to disc grip in the fall, 
your corn stubble, disc grip your whole field. Just lift up, move over that section, send down, keep going. <clears throat> Do your burn down across the whole board. At this point, at this point, we're not really trying to get way too advanced on planting green and stuff like that. Um, so do your normal burn down, fertilizer, plant your beans, and then after beans or late season beans, get your winter rye out there and your other cover crops for your area out there. That's going to set us up. Now here's where all the options come into play. Um, well, we even got one option here that we're, when we're going into the bean market on year number two, if we had winter rye, on year number two, assuming it was the field, you know, down the road, these options, year number two, you could look at your bean option and say, hey, beans aren't really cash flowing this year, but locally there's a strong rye market, straw market, hay market, whatever it is. I'm going to keep that field as a rye, and then you could do any option you wanted at that point. But let's just assume year number two, it's a tiny chunk. Um, you're just going to get the beans in your normal system, except your area you're going to do no-till or minimal-till beans. At the end of beans, you end the year off with some winter rye. So then on year three, now you open up all these options. Um, you can take rye as a first cutting, hay, and then drill more hay crop into it for a better hay crop for the year. You can take the rye as a grain, as a straw, and then seed a hay field behind it, either perennial or annual, and then you get that cutting that fall. Uh, if you go perennial, you get a cutting next spring. <clears throat> then you could either, the next spring, you could either have that established hay field or you could take first cutting plus have your nitrogen credits, some nitrogen credits for your corn crop um, back here. Otherwise, we can sacrifice um, the rye and just plant corn into it. Um, so it really opens up what a guy can do over here. And on year one, the fact that we're getting rid of primary tillage, that's gonna pay for your cover crop seed. Right there, easy. Right from the university, remember, primary tillage is about 25 bucks, cover crops, you can do cover crops for about 25 bucks your first year. Um, grazing, you already got, <clears throat> you could get 30, 40 bucks an acre there, 20, 15, depending on your area, depending on the guy, depending on how much cover crop you have out there. You have a potential income here. Same thing down here, if you ended up no-till beans into that, save your $56 of total tillage cost. Um, and then you gotta pay your $15 for winter rye behind your beans. The cover crops here, we're not looking for this, this massive thing at this point. This first two years is just to see, did the corn grow in a reduced tillage with some cover crops in it? And did the beans grow with a reduced tillage being followed with some cover crop? Did it work? Um, in our corn, if we just get some small growth, it'll be thin, it ain't going to look very healthy, but it's something green and growing for most of that summer in between them corn rows, that's a success. Them are extra roots, that's extra plant matter. The whole cycle of nature happened. Uh, they pumped stuff into the soil. Soil life is starting to grow and build. You're going to start to get some aggregation going. By the end of the second year, if you were no-tilling here, I would recommend no-tilling because it's just a tiny spot and how are you going to learn if you don't try? Just try it. Um, and if it, if it quote unquote don't work because yield, because you're still thinking yield, you're not thinking dollars and cents, you're still thinking yield, uh, analyze it and what happened. And so on $56 an acre, on $3, on $4 corn, you're almost 15 bushel. Um, so if that's within 15 bushel, that's a tie. Um, but you have the long-term benefits of eventually that spot's going to allow you to plant sooner, harvest easier with less mud and, and all the other benefits. Um, around here, you know, if a guy took the rye as a first cutting of hay and then planted the corn into it, there's a potential of a quick hundred dollars. I mean, it, it, you know, even if it's only $70, the, what the heck, that's $70, that's 20 bushels that the corn doesn't have to produce. Or if the corn has a great year, you're already 20 bushels ahead as far as cash flow goes. Um, and so, yeah, and then down here, then you just start back over again. You go back into bean stubble and, and bring your corn back in and just start the cycle over again if you're a corn and bean guy. 
Uh, none of this other stuff is mattering because you're just doing corn and beans with some cover crops and you're, you're still burning them down. Eventually, um, you'll figure more things out as you go, but it's very doable. With, with the reduced tillage, uh, you can stay strict corn and soybean with cover crops and eventually get yourself to a true no-till situation and it'll be successful but just it takes time and that's that's the big thing here is nobody's rushing you your your time frame to get from full till where you are to a no-till situation and successful with covers who cares if it takes you five years on that little test plot who cares if it takes five years Ain't nobody else's business. There's no trophy for moving fast. Be successful at it. Make it work. Um, the dollars and cents of these other options. <clears throat> All right, so here's the board. Um, I put just mostly direct crop expense stuff on there. We did not put in the, the land rent is the same. Land rent taxes, equipment repair, all that kind of stuff is the same. Uh, across your cost of living depreciations you know what I mean um, and so I did not add in that if you're doing full tillage program it'd be 277 if, you, if you're doing no till if you do full till you're at 220 same down here on the corn 275 if you're full till you'd be at 220 just direct crop expense type stuff um, there there's a few dollars difference between planting and seeding I, I'm, we're not we're not here to argue or uh, debate a couple dollars, um, but yeah. So with the rye, seven dollars at forty bushel an acre. Uh, we got nine this year actually, but let's just say seven because that's what I can call in right now and get um, minus fifteen on seed gives you the two sixty five on grain alone. Um, combining you know beans and rye combining costs are pretty much the same. So. I didn't put them in there either. Handling it, you know, whether you're pulling beans off the field or rye, pulling them into the yard, augering into the bin, you know, that that's pretty much the same. Um, but yeah, grain-wise, we're already very tied to soybeans. You're only $10 off at $12 off at that point. Then we got the straw off the farm this year. Uh, we actually did a lot better than this price, but this would be more of a, a fair average price. $160 an acre off the straw, um, minus the baling and handling, it, it gives another $110. Let's say you don't have a very strong straw market. What if you only got half that? What if you got $80? Um, so you'd only end up with 30, 30 some dollars at the end of the day for straw, or you don't even have a baler, you just sell the straw. There's places that pay five to $8 a bale, depending on the bale. Uh, for your straw it, it gives you a little something um, then the hay crop if you behind the straw seed down the hay uh, the potential of $140 an acre minus baling handling and seeding and all that maybe you get another $70 of cash flow um, these are based off of our hay history that number I had to fill in um, the straw was actual numbers, rye was actual numbers, actually they were on the low side. But the hay, we weren't able to seed the hay this year, that was the plan. But the hail <clears throat> kind of reseeded the rye field for us. So by the time of combining, uh, there was already a rye crop grow. The next rye crop was already there. So I'm not going to, I wasn't going to terminate it to grow a hay crop. Um, it, it just, you know, I should have... I should have just no-tilled in some annual clover or something quick, but I just left it as a rye crop just for a rye next year. Um, that was what it is. But the thing is, if we did a hay crop, an annual hay crop, or a perennial hay crop, um, we got nitrogen credits for next year. If we, uh, if we want to do corn, we have a first cutting next year, or we have first cutting and a corn crop or a bean crop the next year. Um, and corn and beans going into an alfalfa or a clover, a nice lush stand like that, always make fantastic crops. So one, you're going to save money on nitrogen. Two, you have extra income because of the first cutting. And three, you're probably going to have a very good stand on that ground compared to the other fields. Um, so you're really setting up for success on that one. Soybeans, $9 at 45 bushel. That's, uh, you can't get $9 right now, but we'll get $9 if not better um, but all 
your seed treatments, the seed itself, fungicide, herbicide, plus application fees, gives you 277. If you did full tillage, you'd be at 220. Um, hey, we got a 700 acre, fertility, seeding, baling, raking, cutting, handling the bales, wrapping, dropped it down to a 390-ish. Corn, 150 at 370. Again, seed fertilizer, um, chemicals, plus application, and then 60 bucks for drying and handling uh, per acre. <sighs> Gives us a 275. If you're doing full till, uh, that'd be back where you're right back down to that 220 again. Uh, 220 off your row crops versus even if you dropped, uh, you drop $150 an acre out. Let's say somewhere this went bad, you were down a, you'd have to go 200, you'd have to cut it in half. You'd have to have this program really be a horrible failure to cash flow similar to corn and beans in a full tillage program. Right off of our farm, our numbers, um, it is what it is, you know, and uh, maybe maybe in your area you don't have seven dollar for rye. Maybe you only have four dollar for rye. That's still that's one hundred sixty dollars. Four dollar rye, if you can get everything else to work out, is still a heck of a better cash flow than beans or corn. Um, and so, there's our alternatives for <clears throat> when we're coming down here to see which way we want to go year by year. Maybe, maybe the next year, <clears throat> so this looking at spring of 20, right now rye is looking really good for us because we have a strong rye, we have strong straw, and we have strong hay market. All three of these are in high demand coming into the spring. Beans and corn, eh, play the market a little bit, a little hedge to arrive. Maybe you can sit on them for six, eight months and, and capture some dollars that way. Um, you know, and you're going to have a couple cents a month in the storage, but maybe, maybe spring of 21, maybe something happens there, spring of 21, maybe corn or beans just takes off for whatever reason. Government changes some ethanol mandates, corn's back to $6, boom, you just run down every acre of rye you got and plant corn. Take, maybe you don't even mess with that first cutting, whatever, you just, you just adapt. Plain and simple. I mean, we got an alfalfa, but if we're coming off of a year where the alfalfa market was just terrible, like that we're still sitting on all the hay because the market just was not there, the next spring, I'm just going to put corn into that beautiful hay field, take advantage of the nitrogen credits, drop my fertilizer bill to practically nothing, and capture that, take that 120 from fertilizer and take half to three quarters of it and put it into the cash flow down here and so you add another hundred bucks down there you know now that corn is really cash flowing um, and so that with with this setup with with the rye in the mix and and hay ground in the mix it really opens it up for us and so I think that's a lot to digest guys on that note I will uh, end it right there thank you very much for uh, watching and uh, comment below